Welcome to Lead Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. And uh, this one I'm pretty excited about. Uh, I know I looked over here because I just looked at all the bottles of wine I've got that I've just done. And I have more to do, not today, but I have more to do at some point in time. A lot. I've got like a month's worth of wine. Anyway, it um, doesn't mean if you, if you have a wine, it doesn't mean you can't send me wine if you have it to send. All right, so... Um, this one I'm pretty excited about. One of the one of the last wines I bought before I went on probation uh, was this wine. Uh, I got it from CinderellaWine.com. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not able to order from Cinderella or Wine Library or really any other wine retailer in the rest of the country because of the idiot Texas lawmakers. Um, wasn't too harsh on that, was I? Uh, Anyway, I was able to buy this at, at the time, unable to buy stuff from Cinderella. I'd still get the daily email just to kind of see what they're, what they're selling. Um, it really sucks because, you know, being able to buy from other retailers online allows you to, I'm going to get my little soapbox for a second, allows you to buy wine that you may not be able to buy anywhere else in your state or in your city. Um, same time, you know what that means to me? Uh, another little thing that I was really griping about on Twitter the other day was that the San Antonio wine shops need to kind of step up a little bit, get into 2011 here instead of like a 2000, you know, a 2000 website where yes, we exist. Show me more. You, you, we have computerized inventories now. You know, I should be able to look at your inventory. Maybe not, you know, up to the second inventory, but I should be able to look at and and see what you have. Maybe even order some stuff for delivery. So, it's it's more expensive than. There, there's expenses involved. I understand some of these wine shops don't have the budget to be computerizing everything, nor do they have the budget to be shipping stuff and pay people to do that. But um, it is a little frustrating on some of the larger companies in town and in the state that are in this town that uh, don't have these types of things, whereas other companies out there in the uh, in the country do. All right, soapbox rant over. All right, so this is the 2004 La Universal. Uh, Venus 2004 is from the Monsant uh, Dio in Spain. Right. All right, so uh, this wine, it's really hard. It was kind of hard to get information on it, but um, I had to find somebody else's wine review of it to, to get the breakdown of the varietals. Uh, but this is made uh, by the same people that make that Rene Barbier. Hold on. Not that I'm reviewing it, but when I was taking pictures, I was going to use the, the bottle. Uh, the same people that make this that they make this wine, the Rene Barbier uh, or Barbier uh, Mediterranean White. Um, this is more uh, collaboration with this with this uh, with uh, Barbier and um, Sarah Perez, uh, daughter of winemaker Jose Luis Perez, uh, who I unfortunately I do not know who that is, but I'm sure it's a, a well-known Spanish winemaker. Uh, so it's a collaboration between the two of them. Uh, it is 50%, uh, and the Spanish name for the grape is uh, Car Car Carina, uh or known as Carignan, uh, and 50% Syrah. Now this is from, uh, like I said, the Montsant, uh, or my, I, I, it looks like a French name. Uh, being that there's Catalan influence and you know the French and Spanish and all that stuff. Uh, I doubt it's called Monsant, but um, it's Monsant or Monsant uh, Dio. This Dio is really kind of funny looking. Um, it's kind of like this C on the map. It's it, it's not like you know a blob right in the middle. It's it kind of curves around this this area. But um, anyway, uh, so it's in the southern southern part of Spain. It's a uh, uh, you know, it's a Dio that's been around for a little while, but um, yeah, that's what I want to say about that. <laughs> it's kind of strange looking, but uh, 
the uh, there was something else about it I was going to talk about. Do do do. Not really. Uh, yes, yeah, in the southern western uh, part of Catalonia, part of Spain. Um, anyway, so uh, I've got plenty of varieties that they use, but uh, we're going to check this out. So it's a 50-50 blend of two grapes. Uh, Twenty. I'm sorry, it was $29.99 on CinderellaWine.com. I've already put on the lower third, I'm sure, uh, which is a lot cheaper than what Wine Library would have been selling it for. It probably sells for at least $10 to maybe $20 more a bottle. So uh, it was a good deal. Decided to try it, and I'm, really, I'm actually really excited about trying this. I've been missing. I've been really, really wanting to have this wine for over a year. So minerality, dust, it, it, it smells old as an old world, not old and bad, not, not in a bad, musty, bad way. But, but it has that, that European smell to it. Um, definitely get that, you know, a, a dusty room, antique shop-ish type of thing. And not much on the fruit, but uh, definitely the old antique shop. So let's taste it. Dirt, minerality for days. Very dry, uh, not a whole lot of sweetness to it. Um, like, like I've used in the past, that it, the the my you know dad's accordion case, dusty accordion case type of smell. But but it's not not like the first few times I used it, where it was like really like bitter and kind of like ugh. This is just more of a hint of that. Um, remember that's the alarm to tell me I'm at seven minutes. So to wrap this up, um, yeah, definitely, definitely that type of that uh, dustiness, dirt, minerality, earthiness, uh, fruit, like dried fruit, maybe like dried, like dried, I don't know, like plums, dried, uh, yeah, like dried, like dried plum, maybe. Ooh, wait a minute. I don't know, but dried apricot comes to mind, but like like dried fruit, you know. So you so you've got that. So you've got the you got the flavor, a little bit of sweetness of the fruit, but it's not like this juicy, you know, sweetness to it. I could drink this wine. I mean, I better for thirty bucks. Okay, I mean, it better be pretty good. I mean, we all know that price doesn't always dictate quality. Um, there are plenty of wines out there that are ten bucks that can rival the quality of, of, of more expensive wine, maybe not hundred dollar bottles of wine, but you know, the thirty dollar variety, you know, thirty dollar part of wine. Um, but I really like this wine. I'm impressed with it. When I use the word impressed, it starts meaning that we probably should be hitting the ninety point range. Um, I'm not gonna say it's the best wine I ever had, but uh, I really do like it. I'm gonna say a ninety, a solid ninety point wine. Yeah, ninety. I really like it. Um, if you can find it I would say buy it, but then again, it's not going to be a cheap wine. It's not it's not value driven wine like most of the wines I try to do. Um, it's probably it's going to be at least thirty bucks wherever you buy it. It may not be a two thousand four. You may be getting a two thousand five at this point. Um, but uh, you know, it's seven years old. Well, technically, it's six and a half years old because we're, we're only in the middle ish part of of uh, <coughs> of the year. So six year old wine. And uh, so it's probably at it's probably at the I don't know it might be at the peak of it or it might be peaking right now. So if you're gonna drink it, you probably want to drink it now. You don't want to hold on to it for another five years. Um, definitely, definitely, if you can find it, get it and drink it. Ninety points, awesome. All right, uh, like I said, the last show. 
you can't figure out a way to contest, got an idea for what to do. I mean, I had a couple ideas, but what do you what do you think? Uh, I'll send you a I'll send you a sheet uh, for free. You can do some guerrilla marketing. I'm not telling you where to put the things, where to put the stickers, because I'm not going to get you and I'm not going to get myself in trouble for telling you where to put the stickers. But um, I mean, you could put it, you know, on a spit bucket, or I haven't done it to my computer yet. Uh, I don't know if I am, but put it on the back of your laptop, or you can put it on your bumper, your bumper of your car. It's not really a bumper sticker. I don't know how long it will last. Uh, I do know that um, this does scratch off if you're not careful. Um, put it on the back of, I didn't put it on the back of my phone itself, but my phone case, my battery, my Mophie case, I put it on the back of that. So you can put on some stuff that's legitimately yours, or you could put it on other things. Anyway, um, that's going to be it. We'll see everybody again uh, next time.